The Boko Haram, as at the point General Buhari took over, Boko Haram was actually in control of territory in the Northeast. They were actually control of I am now telling you that Nigerian government is hardly, hardly in control of that same territory. If you say the insurgents are not in control, well, Nigerian government is not effectively in control. If they are in control, please take the IDPs back. Read the situation well, please, my brother. It's you I'm asking the question. I'm I telling you, read. I have just told you. I have answered your question. Now, Nigerian uh, government is not effectively in control of the so-called liberated area. And if you are pushing me, I'll allow myself to be pushed to a certain limit. Keep asking the questions. Do we know how many insurgents or suspects have been released and why and what were their profiles? Do we know? We don't know. But let me tell you, Buhari's government, APC, has cheated Nigeria beyond recognition. Because their promises to bring about peace in Nigeria has been a monumental failure. If there were anything that I personally thought they could ever do, I knew from day one, economy was in trouble with the Buhari. But I was hopeful that they would bring about security. Now I know, and you should know as well, that no one should ever play politics with security. Even as I sit here, I'm not playing politics with security. You know and I know, no politician in this world, not, not just in Nigeria, is privileged to know about government files. Only if you are duly elected, sworn in, then you are fully briefed by the security agencies. Will you claim to know exactly what is happening? As I sit down here with you, I only know what I read from the media. I do not know the extent to which APC knew while they were fighting PDP government. I do not know that. And I'm asking people to ask, how did Buhari and his people, how did APC know how much they knew about insurgency, about insecurity in Nigeria when they were not officially briefed by the security agencies? Earlier in the interview, you mentioned something about the Ekiti elections and the issue of vote buying and There will be those who will presume that for all of you who are campaigning to be president, you must have a lot of money, especially given the fact that now what seems to be in vogue is virtually the outright purchase of votes, uh, starting from primaries where you do that with delegates and then on to the main elections, and from what observers, both internal and external observers have said, there's been a rise with each subsequent election in the role of money in the election. Only a couple of days ago, INEC increased the number of parties to 91 now, disqualifying 121. I can only answer for myself. I yes. cannot answer for Other politicians. Aspirants in general. I do not have money for money politics. What I have, by the special grace of God Almighty, is simple logistics to carry me across. And let me put it this way. If I become president of Nigeria by the special of grace of God Almighty, then we yet have another wonderful opportunity to have the Nigeria of our dreams. If I do not become the president, for God's sake, I'm happy. I continue praying for Nigeria wherever I can offer my support, I will. I don't think I will fall down and die because I did not become president. I had an election won in my hands like never before in 2007. And it was taken away in broad daylight. I went to the tribunal and it was, you know, funny to hear the justice uh, being announced, served on me. Went to appeal. I, the same thing I won again in 2011. I was in the Senate 
And the gentleman went back to court after congratulating me and said that uh, he, he won. And, you know, when all these things happened, what happened? I became happier. Now, if I don't become president, I'm sorry for Nigeria. It is a whole lot of opportunities for enhanced security, improved economy, and quality education gone away. You mean, none of, your, away. You mean none of your fellow contestants can offer anything like that? Permit me to remain silent on that for now. But I would if, like, if one of them I can wins. assure you that Buhari is not providing that and will never provide it. No, I'm talking about your colleagues, or your co contestants we are, within the PDP. We are in an era where we protect each other, we are not tearing each other apart. In can PDP. I take that to mean that if someone other than you wins, you will support whoever that Depending is? Depending on how the primaries are conducted. Let me ask you as an academic. Very uh, briefly, give us what you consider to be the key leadership question that Nigeria has to answer today. Is the aspirant or candidate able to say what he means and mean what he says? That's it. Talking about the background of the person, exactly. the antecedents, exactly. what this person has done in the past. Exactly with a view to now using that? You see, that question you ask is um, instructive in today's Nigeria. Because we know what we're crying about. I don't have to list them. Yet, the politics is configured in such a way that those with cash, namely governors, have dominated the fourth republic. After President Obasanjo, Atiku was a governor-elect, became vice president. It was governor and governor, and then another governor and governor, and then it was another governor and governor before being defeated. Now, in advanced democracies, senators are far higher than governors. The United States, the Obamas, the McCains, the Clintons, and um, Joe the Biden. Yeah. The, historically, there has been more senators who became uh, contested and became senators, the uh, presidents in the United States. In, in the UK, members of the House of Lords, even though they are not the exact equivalent of Senate, they are the upper house, there is no way ever that somebody from the House of Lords will go to the equivalent of their exactly. mayorship. In Nigeria, what is happening? They are looking for a serving governor who's got the treasury of his state who can carry the party, who can carry the delegates. This is wrong, this is misplaced. And I think anybody who, is, who has direct access to state funds must never be allowed to go close to the coveted seat of president. So your question is not only relevant, it is instructive. And so unfortunate, we are looking the wrong way. Poor politicians like me are challenged but I'm not scared. If it is a matter of affording to buy a nomination and intent for, by the grace of God Almighty, I'll be able to afford that. The number of delegates, let us face them. Let them collect everything that they, they are able to collect from other rich. I will simply present myself. And I repeat, politically speaking, I know how unpolitical it is to say. But yes, I don't have that kind of money. Even if I had, I have better things to do than to spend in that kind of dangerous game. So if Nigeria wishes to be better, if we genuinely deserve better security in Nigeria, if we genuinely deserve not to have the kind of corrupt leadership that we have and our economy to prosper, then we must stand and see that such kind of injustice done to me in the past is never done again. This injustice again is going to repeat itself, maybe, at the primaries, and I am more than happy to present myself there. Let it be done. I would have lost the money for the form and everything, but Nigerians would have lost that wonderful opportunity again, and in, in its place would have bought for themselves further calamity.